We're here at Folgers Marsh on the island of Nantucket. And we're going to talk about what a salt marsh is. Salt marshes are communities of this grass and the animals associated with them that form in quiet embayments between the high tide and low tide marks. It's an interesting habitat because it's both an aquatic habitat flooded with salty water and a terrestrial habitat. When the tide comes in, as we see here at high tide, the water moves over the surface of the grass and it's partially an aquatic habitat. The grasses are experiencing salty water, which is not a great condition for them, but the, these are grasses are adapted to tolerate it. And animals move on to the marsh and get some protection from predation. Things like little, a little shrimp and little fish can move on to the surface of the marsh. There's a gradation of species on the marsh from this edge or this low tide or low marsh mark to the high tide mark as you move back. At the edge, we have this species called Spartina alterniflora, or salt marsh cordgrass. It can grow pretty tall in some areas, and as you move back onto the marsh, it stunts. It's most covered by the tide for the longest period of time. Tides come in and out on a six hour cycle, twice a day. It can tolerate this being flooded by water because it has aerial roots. Plants take in oxygen through air, not through water. The animals that live on the marsh, however, most of them are aquatic animals, things like mussels and fiddler crabs, and they get oxygen from the water. I want to talk a little bit about the animals in the marsh. You can see there are birds feeding. This is important habitat for feeding things like egrets and herons and osprey. The water that comes in through the marsh channels and flows throughout the marsh is important habitat for crabs and smaller juvenile fish of some commercially important species such as flounder and bluefish. We also have smaller species that are salt marsh creek inhabitants that provide food for the crabs and the other larger fish. At the edge of the marsh, there is a mussel that's attached to the substrate and to the um, roots of the Spartina alterniflora. This mussel, called the rib mussel, Gucensia demisis, has a mutualistic association with the grass. It provides nitrogen and stabilizes the roots, while the plant provides a place for it to, to attach to and a little bit of protection from predators. You also find fiddler crabs. Fiddler crabs make little burrows along the edge, and there's actually three species of fiddler crab that live in a marsh, in this marsh. Some live in this more sandy habitat, another species lives in more muddy habitat, and as you go back through the marsh towards the road, there's actually a source of fresh water, and you get a third species that lives in that more brackish water or less salty water. Filler crabs make burrows, and this burrow helps aerate the substrate. One condition of a marsh is that when it's flooded, we have a lot of microbial action going on, and it depletes the water that's in the sediment of oxygen. And so, as you move back, if you were to dig a hole and let it fill with water, that water would be very smelly because of the microbial actions of sulfur. It also would have very little oxygen in it, if any oxygen at all. And this is also a physiological stress for plants and animals. So you can see as a, a salt marsh is a very unique community of plants and animals that lives in this area of the coast. It's an important habitat. It's a habitat that provides a lot of primary production, which means the grasses take in carbon dioxide and turn that into organic carbon. Um, it also is an important habitat for the coastline behind it. It provides protection from storm damage in a buffer zone between the sea and the land. And thirdly, it's an important habitat for these um, important commercial species and juvenile fish that use the salt marshes to grow larger. They use the food provided by the other smaller organisms that eat the detritus provided by the plants 